Hello, Floss Tube. It's Amber Rogue Mama Stitcher, and it is October 25th, 2022, and this is Floss Tube number 26 for me. So thank you for joining me, and um, thank you and hello to all the new subscribers. And I think I got over 100 subscribers, new subscribers, um, since been almost two weeks. I think it's been almost two weeks since Floss Tube number 25. Um, so yeah, uh, welcome and uh, yeah, let's get started. So first, uh, so I have a, I have um, a finish, I have whips, and I have some FFOs. Um, so I have a few things to show you. Um, so we'll see how long this one is. Um, just get your, you know, get your stitching and stitch along. Sorry, it's going to be wrinkly. I'm trying to keep this protected. My, my dear finish. I have to do that before they become FFOs, and there's been a lot of FFOs around, so I'm like, don't want my finishes that are also laying around to get paint or anything on them. So, um, yeah. So, there's my finish. Yippee ki MF. So yeah, it's pretty awesome. Um, designed by Stitchman Darcy. Um, and you can find this in his Etsy shop. And I stitched this on um, 28 count even weave antique white. And it's supposed to be about when you do it on 28 count or 14 count, it's supposed to be about um, 14 inches long about 14 inches long mine turned out 16 inches long because it was the weave was wider going that way that I stitched it so I actually really like it I think it's cool to have it longer and then it'll take up more uh, space on the display shelf so um then um, I backstitched everything that was called to backstitch except for the trees and I, I really, you know, I, and that's just personal preference because I, I really like um, the trees to kind of be sort of a little bit more muted with the snowflakes. I like the idea of having a little bit more of a backdrop. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously the um, end uh, three, four, five letters. Let's see. Sorry, just one second. Five. So the f last five letters have been replaced um, by symbols, and um, my husband uh, just gets on a cross stitch program and you know just modifies things the way I ask him if um, if I like to modify something. And um, I did ask him to do this, and he was um, he was awesome, and uh, you know just took some time and. And did that and I absolutely love how that turned out. I think it's perfect for what I wanted, I envisioned, and um yeah, so this will be this will be an FFO the next time. So super excited about that and great design. Uh really, really fun. Um, as I've said on my on my previous episodes. Um so yeah. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, really close. Okay, so that was my finish, and then um, what do we want to do? Let's show FFOs. Okay, let's show FFOs. So the the first one I will show you is my oh and here's here's the back. So scary. <laughs> um so this is my uh Stitchy Princess Black Baba Yaga um that I did last year, I believe it was last year in support for Ukraine. And I already actually had bought this and a few of her other designs. So it was, uh, I just, you know, just started it sooner than I had originally planned. And it's just uh, adorable and sweet. And I love, I love it. Even though Baba Yaga is very scary. Um, the, the legend, um, the, you know, folklore. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but I, so I got this at the thrift, this frame at the thrift store and I didn't really know why I got it. Um, I just saw it and, and it was, um, 
you know, raw wood, um, you know, it was just um, ready to paint, basically. And it, you know, it has a couple like little dings in it, um, which I love. I love character like that. And I think up here too. Um, you know, I love when, when frames and um, things that you kind of redo, refurbish, uh, have, have just kind of character uh, to them, their own unique flaws. Um, so yeah, so I um, stained this a couple different colors. So it was, um, let's see, it was originally meant to be painted um, white, uh, and I'll show you the example of what it came in, but yeah, this was totally brand new, you know, wrapped and everything with you know, like a little kit. Um, but yeah, uh, so I just didn't know what I was going to use it for. And then it just turned out that it turned, it was just perfect for, um, Baba Yaga. And then I happened to have these little, um, these little mushrooms <laughs> from, um, you know, that I'd gotten at Joanne's like, I think last year or a couple years ago. Um, but I, I absolutely love these little mushrooms that do, I know I just got a lot of them, little mushroom beads. And I, I guess I just went for sort of like simple and understated for the, for the beads, um, you know, not to like put a lot, you know, all over the frame, um, inside of the frame. I just, I love just a couple simple little, little mushrooms in it. It actually just happens to go with the, uh, same type of mushroom, the kind of classic mushroom that Baba Yaga's cooking, I guess, children with, <laughs> um, but yeah, and then it happens to really go well with the stain that, that I picked. So it's like, I think it's a maple, uh, you know, start uh, stain. The first stain I did was maple. And then the second stain I did was, um, I think it's English chestnut, I believe. Um, so yeah, so it just turned out really pretty. And I just stained them a couple times. So, you know, it got a little bit darker. And then, um, you know, sanded it with a fine grit. And then my husband um, uh, wax, but, um, uh, I think it's just like furniture wax and it's a, the dark wax on here. And then he, you know, polished it and, oh, I love, it's really, you can't feel it, but it's very smooth. And I, you know, I love it having that extra layer of protection on top of like work you've done. So you can tell it's like a little bit shiny anyways. And then, um, so this board, this is like Frog tape, I believe what it's called, like painter tape, but green, I believe. Um, so this board um, was, you know, obviously the perfect cutout to mount the piece on that would go in the front. So um, my husband suggested that we use something we've never used. <laughs> and that's how he is. He loves to try, um, you know, new things, uh, just, you know, experiment on any kind of like possible better way to do things, uh, just really with anything. And so he suggested this adhesive spray, and which, you know, sounds super scary to me, <laughs> you know, something spraying onto my, onto my finished piece. Anyway, so we did that, um, because, you know, we, t he, uh, had us test a, you know, a couple, um, you know, scrap fabrics, um, and, um, onto, you know, ad adhering them onto the wood, you know, just scrap wood and um and it worked great so this adhesive spray was was awesome for this so i didn't have to wrap this or stretch it or anything because it's um well such a small piece you know um it wasn't like a it wasn't needing to have it wrapped around it just could lay on the the board and and just be straight uh you know adhered to it so the trick was to spray, uh, and I do have an iron on, I have interfacing on the back of Baba Yaga and I do almost with all of my bigger pieces, um, pretty much all my pieces. I try to get some interface on the back cause then it really keeps the stitching secure. So yeah, so the, the adhesive was, you know, light layers sprayed on, onto the interface back of it, of Baba Yaga. And then a light layer of adhesive was sprayed onto the back of the cardboard or um the board rather this it's not cardboard um and then this is the this is the original picture of what was in the kit um you know that i found at the thrift store so much different we decided not to use the balls that went on them the balls were 
they seemed almost like um not like like Baba Yaga seems like she's a little more like bare bones, a little more kinda rough in it. So the balls seem too soft for Baba Yaga. <laughs> so if you understand what I'm saying, I'm trying to make sure it stays in the picture because it's so cute. Okay. Um and then my next finish that if you're following me on Instagram, probably everybody has seen. Um, but if you're just into floss tube, then you haven't seen it yet. But that is, that is my, uh, well, FFO, my next FFO. So that is the Edgar Allan Poe quote. Um, and the, um, pattern is by Modern Folk Embroidery. And I stitched this on a 28 count even weave by the, uh, Crazy Hamster, Oksana, oh, I know I'm going to mess her last name up, but I'll, um, I'll link her Instagram below. Lopatina, something like that. Um, but yeah, and then my Baba Yaga was on her fabric as well, and it's a 28 count, uh, even weave. Um, and I think that one might be a Monaco, but I don't think this one is a Monaco. I just can't remember. I'm sorry. It's been a year or so. Um, but yeah, so I'll get a little closer for you to look. So this is, um, a vintage brass frame, um, that I found online. I was searching for vintage, uh, I was rather searching for just kind of really cool, like, you know, kind of thicker, ornate type of, uh, uh frames. And they are really expensive, and this was actually only $30, um, and it was from the 70s, and so I was like, hey, that is, that is a great deal. Um, but it was bigger than this, um, and once I knew the piece I wanted to use it with, I, you know, brought, <laughs> brought my request to my husband, and, um, and he's, you know, he said, sure, I've never, you know, worked with brass before but I can try and you know do my best and so he um figured out a way to you know how he would detach and reattach and what was the best way to cut uh brass and so these um these little um corner pieces here he had to get a blowtorch um to um detach the the solder I think and um it was amazing like he he really um it was the there was a learning curve and you know you know he can you know try those new things as I said and and uh you know it but doesn't mean it doesn't take time so it did take him some time um you know just a day like you know a few hours in the day and I mean that's a lot to me and to him so it was awesome that he he stuck through it and figured it all out and anyway so yeah so he had to cut he had to cut the the frame under here um you know and angle it right and everything and this actually this frame had been dropped because it was bent also so he had to hammer out the <laughs> hammer out the uh you know the bends in it the kinks in it and um cut it and then yeah re-solder um Resolder these pieces and resolder um, the frame the frame corners together. So um, and I will show you the back. Um, I I didn't have a big enough piece of paper, but I did. I taped all of the fabric. I had to readjust it several times because I believe this fabric is kind of uneven. So I had to um, kind of yeah reposition the fabric several times and also the frame being bent and and some other things you know it was it was a challenge to kind of center this as much as it is able to be centered as much as it was able to be centered um yeah so and then <laughs> and then you know i i i don't know if like all of you are like i mean i don't think most maybe most people aren't like this i'm not sure maybe there's some but it's kind of like dvd like behind the scenes uh you know i i'm old enough to remember when that kind of first became like a big thing having like every 
every movie or DVD or now Blu-ray having like a behind the scenes, like, um, you know, of a movie you watch and I, it, it kind of like ruined the mystique for me. And so I didn't always want to like watch those. So I don't know for like DIY people, like maybe this is fun to you. I, I mean, cause this is just so gorgeous the way this turned out. Like I am just beyond pleased. Like this turned out even more beautiful than I ever dreamed so I'm so pleased with it like even down to the um, frame having the modern folk embroidery feel of you know um, having the the flowers in his uh, patterns and but also having the gothic feel um, you know just maybe like a raw iron gate or something and then their ornate frames that they would have with their paintings and their um, you know estates or mansions or whatever <laughs> So anyways, when I went to Joanne's, I was looking for, you know, black roses or black something to accent these corners. Um, and I found nothing <laughs> except for um, women's cat ear headbands. And there were only two left on clearance. And um, that's what had these roses in it. So I bent the cat ear behind. The, I mean, I had to use clippers like wire cutters to get these, you know, cat ears off of the headband. And then, yeah, just bent the cat ear behind the roses so I could glue them on the corners. Um, you know, to kind of, kind of, uh, it helped to kind of lift it up, you know, having that, their lacy cat ears. So anyways, that's, <laughs> that's the whole story. <laughs> so pretty cool. Um, you know, really quite pleased. So yeah, that's my, that's my story. And, uh, you know, watch, definitely watch some Poe movies at least, um, to get me in the mood to do that, um, to get some inspiration as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, um, I watched, um, with my husband, I watched The Haunted Palace with, um, oh, just one second. Okay, um, I watched The Haunted Palace with um, starring Vincent Price, and uh, says it's based on a Poe book. But uh, my son was listening to listening to some of it and talk, you know, the kind of some of the stuff that the characters were mentioning um, with like Egyptian gods and stuff. And he's like, "That sounds like um, is it H.P. Uh, Lovecraft? Am I saying that right?" Oh like I I get nervous when I'm doing these and then I'm like oh wait you know am I getting that right when I normally like I would know that was right that's fine anyway so we thought maybe they in the the movie makers had added some H.P. Lovecraft in there so but it was really it was really cool it was like gross too like um the noises that were being made like just I have like this like um misophonia I think and uh oh like it's just like certain noises. I'm just like, ah, you know, and so like there was like squishing noises in it that I was just like, oh, like it's so gross. Anyway, so, you know, just kind of got to got through my very core. <laughs> um, but it was a really good movie. I thought it was super interesting. So if you are interested in checking that out, you should. And I, I was watching it on Prime. And as you might know um i'm in utah and we just had and closer to colorado and wyoming where i am and we just had our first our snow like of the season um a couple days ago so um i'm gonna show you my snow finish my wintery finish as well my ffo um yeah i was gonna save this till next time because i have several other things that i will be ffoing for probably my next one so Cocoa time by Ink Circles. So I FFO'd this. And this is something, this is a frame I got from the thrift store as well. And I used, um, I think it's called Hammered Pewter. And it's just a spray, a spray paint I got from Lowe's. And yeah, so I think it's trying to focus on my face. I'm going to try to get out of there. There we go. If you can kind of see that. And there's, you know, there's like a imperfections in this that I didn't see when I was spray painting it. So I didn't paint over those and it 
So like this, there's like a ding in the top. So anyways, um, but yeah, I love how it turned out. Oh, it's just beautiful. I, and I was looking for like kind of the thicker frame to, you know, that was probably like that much thicker than this one. Um, that was in their, um, you know, their finish example piece that they did for Coco Time. Um, but I couldn't, I couldn't find anything that I liked well enough to go with this. And this was exactly the right size for Coco Time when I picked it off the shelf. So <laughs> it was just like, wow, this is such a lucky find. And I was just really fortunate to get it. So anyways, love that hammered look like that, you know, just that kind of raw, like it's been, you know, forged. <laughs> Um, yeah, so there it is. And I did this as a sal with, um, Erin Stay at Home Stitcher, uh, the Stitching Penguin Ashley, uh, Sammy Liz, and there was one other person on Instagram, I can't remember, but this was a joy. Super fun to stitch. So not too late to start this year. And I don't know if, I think they've all finished by now, so... I don't know if that sounds probably not around anymore, but it's still a little bit, a little bit tacky, but that's okay. So, yeah, that was my last FFO to show you this time. And then, um, I will show you my whip rotation. So I do have more than this, but, um, I'm not working on them currently, so I won't bother. So my first one that I will show you that I was hoping to get the square completely done and I didn't. So bummer, but I will, I will keep working on it. So that's what I have done. And before I just had a few, um, half stitches up on, on the top when I, when I showed last time on floss two, but this is obviously storm. And yeah, below here will be Rogue, and I think I will <clears throat> work on Rogue next after Storm's Square is totally complete. So, and here is what it all will look like once it's done. So, yeah, there it is, and that's by Stitchy Rin. She designed that, it's in her Ko Fi store. And I will link her in the description. Okay, and then I have, oh, I didn't take it out of the hoop, <laughs> oh, okay, almost there. So this is my, um, it's kind of been one of my main Halloween whips, my Q Patterns by Maria, um, Trick or Treat. my needle my nose. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but we got a piano for free and my kids are playing it. <laughs> okay. There we go. So pardon the hoop marks. Yeah. So since the last time I showed this, I believe that I've added the pumpkin cupcake and the blue frosted donut with the spider and the spider web on it and I absolutely love that that was my goal for completion on this for a whip for this year um but I'm kind of wanting to do the double cupcake the double cupcake looks pretty cool but I'm not I'm not committed to that yet so um, and I'll show you what I mean for those of you who haven't seen this you need the reminder so that's Maria Bravco, Q Patterns by Maria, Trick or Treat. Um, but yeah, see that double cupcake's really kind of cool. And then it'll be like, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm like two thirds done, something like that. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see if I'll do it. It seems simple enough, and I can do it after Halloween if I feel like it. Um, and then I have my. Sorry guys, um, sniffing my Bronte piece, my Emily Bronte piece, um, her sampler and it's a little tight in there, but yeah, the Jody redesigns, um, variegated floss 
perfect, perfect purples is how I imagine that because I think she's UK. Yeah, she's UK. So everything will be okay. Needle minder. Can't remember the shop off the top of my head, but I did, in, I did uh, mention in another episode when I got it. So that's the Emily Bronte sampler that I'm doing. And um, Moira Blackburn design or chart charted these because um, they chart the mistakes as well. Um, you know, anything unique to the historical sampler. And so she, it was charted that the, um, I believe it says, this is 127 width by 106 height. And I believe she says that it was um, oriented, um, the fabric was oriented to where it was the greater, let's see, Emily's was running uh, the greater, um, I think she says the greater thread count running um, horizontally. So in other words, I did this, I, th I think I did this how it was supposed to be done because it's measuring what the pattern says it's supposed to be, which is like 9.1 inches, something like that. And so this should be 7.6, I believe. Um, but yeah, you have to really pay attention with, um, you know, if you're trying to make an exact replica of a historical sampler for, you know, things like that when it, when it tells you, because it really can make a, a d big difference. And I, I do know that, but <clears throat> excuse me, like I wasn't trying to do an exact duplicate, obviously, because <laughs> I would be using dark green for the, um, the floss. And I didn't, I wanted to make it lighter and kind of more, um, girly I guess like for the for the Bronte sisters because I think you know if maybe if they had a variety more of a variety of flosses like maybe they would have chosen um different colors like other than the dark green so um it's just you know just a guess but <laughs> you know being a girl myself I think I would have you know if I had options but they didn't I don't think they had a lot of options they, they were limited back then um so then my next, um, my next whip is the Mary Poppins piece, um, by Little Stitch Shop, or Little Stitchers, hold on, let me go to, I think it's the Little Stitch Shop, um, what it is on Etsy, but I did the kite, you know, from, uh, whoa, 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 let's go fly a kite. I, every time I get on this, I start to start to remember the whole soundtrack of the Disney Mary Poppins. So anyway, and then I finish this little, you know, line up here. This um, kind of like the border. And uh, yeah, and then a little bird. I don't think I'd done the bird last time. Maybe. So, and the original. Or the, the sample picture. Okay. And I'm doing a sell with Amber, um, Mom Stitcher, on Floss Tube and on Instagram. And it's called the Spoon or Spoon Full of Sugar Cell. So join us anytime. And uh, yeah, okay. I will link that shop though. Okay, and then my. Next whip is, oh, messed up thing in the camera, is the Joan Elliott Autumn Fairy, and I'm doing this sal, as a sal with, um, I'm just showing you the, the fabric, not my loose thread, um, but that's the fabric, Fallen Leaves is what this is called by Pull Stitches, and the um the count is 28 it's evenly lugana and yeah i'm just in love with these wings i knew they'd be fun and they are really fun um more than i expected which is always very nice and it's driving me nuts that i haven't filled in uh, the the wings 
uh, before I did this right here, with, you know, with the space between the wings and her hair. It's just more wings, but, you know. And then the uh, Needleminder is obviously Clay by Pam, and it was given to me by um, April um, Meowper on Instagram, I believe. <laughs> so, yeah, beautiful. And I've done some of that purple sash she's wearing. Just, oh, I love those purples. So pretty, and I love love the greens and you know her face is just so peaceful you know and just almost like a loving face and this is before even back stitches put on and i just absolutely love it and this is a um the sal's name is joan elliott fairy Sal. and also kitchy whips joined in she's doing it as well she has Oh no, I forgot. It's a goddess. Earth goddess. That's what it is. Earth goddess. Hers is, is going to be so amazing. So check that out too. And that's, uh, you know, the end result there. And I can't, I, I love beading and I really look forward to doing the beading on, on this one. It'll be just outstanding. I love it. I love all the swirls, even her hair is curly swirled at the bottom it just yeah it's so so beautiful so that's going to be really fun down in the bottom of the on the uh the hem of the dress how it's green it's got that uh you know pop of green at the bottom i'm i'm really looking forward i'm also looking forward to doing that apple but that would have been too easy just to do that first so i just wanted to kind of you know go down further to where um you know the wings I was on the same about the same plane as the arms uh, so that you know it kind of you know it's about on the same uh, level when I start going down uh, on the skirt so if that makes sense I just wanted to hold off on the on the apple because that'll be just fun to do you know delayed gratification I guess but the wings are amazing, so it's not too much of that. <laughs> um, sorry, I hit that again. Oh, hello. Come here. Come here. Come here. You want to come and say hello? It's Artemis. Oh, come here. Oh, come here. Oh, she does not want to come here. <laughs> she's uh, she's shy. Okay, and then um, trying to keep on track here. So then I have um, two things I've started, and one of them is embroidery that was a gift from Samantha Huga Stitcher. So she gave me this, a kit. She kitted up for me, and I, um, I did, um, I was too impatient, and I did the iron-on way too many times pieces at once and I it did tell you to do it separately and I didn't listen I read it but I was like no it'll be fine um so my um first piece and honestly I don't even know if I'm doing these right I think I might be I'm supposed to maybe do them chunkier so that's my first piece I did it's the, it's the, the test piece but I I had to bleach this fabric twice because, um, I don't know, I just didn't do some of it right, and it didn't look right, and so I cut them all out individually after I got most of the old stamp off, and then I re I repositioned them all separately, like I was supposed to. But anyways, I love this variegated floss, holy moly, it looks so, so pretty. I mean, I just love it. And so I only did three strands of, um, and I just did backstitch. I've just been doing backstitch. So, I mean, it's like, it's practice all on, oh, I hope I was showing you that, uh, not half of it, but the, all of it. But um, it's practice in and of itself to, without holes to guide you, um, to do um, the spacing properly. So that was, that's been interesting and it's been so relaxing to be able to do this 
you know, without, I just use a hoop, the little hoop she gave me. And, you know, it's almost like when I'm, you know, between, between doing, um, you know, driving my kids to their various activities and classes and stuff in the day, it's an easy thing to just do for maybe like 10 minutes and then put it down with cross stitch. I'm like, don't want to put it down for hours if I can help it. So <laughs> it's been a nice thing to be able to, whew, you know, kind of do that and, and not uh, be too attached to it for a long time. Cause I, you know, you have like little areas of completion. And it's, aren't those so beautiful? I bobbinated them. Oh, I just love the variegation. Not all of them are variegated, but the ones that are, they're very sweet and they turn out really cool on the, on the embroidery piece. So I did, I got it started. Yay. And I'll just keep doing them and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with what I finished yet, but I'll figure something fun out. So any suggestions I would be welcome if anybody wants to give me suggestions. Um, and I remember uh, reading um, on a, I think it's the Cross Stitcher Friends in the UK, in that group, they were um, talking about um, embroidery being, um, that cross stitch is just an, one embroidery stitch, and that embroidery actually is, cross stitch is uh, sort of like a um, branch off of embroidery, something like that. Uh, also, I wouldn't mind hearing opinions about that, if that's accurate or not. So, okay. And then I have way too much haul. <laughs> um, what I was, what I've been trying to do partly with my, um, with the starts that I've been doing, like, um, why I've kind of ramped that up more is because I did spend quite a bit of time on the um, well, I was doing family history a lot, and then I spent quite a, a bit of time on, um, just making sure that the under the mistletoe stocking got done before Christmas, and so that took all my focus for a few months. So I feel like I kind of have, with my new starts, I, I've kind of tried to average out, you know, of like the new moon, new start thing where, um, Megan, um, Stitching Moon and I were doing, and she's still doing it. Um, and she got the idea from somebody else and I can't remember the person's name because I don't, I don't know if I, I don't think I've watched any other, if they have floss tube, I don't know if I've watched any of them, but, um, but yeah, I'm trying to kind of actually do the new starts to like average all the new starts I thought I was going to have because I was doing new moon, new start. So we'll see what happens if I make it. But then as I'm doing new starts, I realize there's a lot of things I need to get still and, <laughs> you know. So I kind of have a lot of haul that I, you know, it's been, um, I don't know. I don't, I try not, I try to limit myself. So it's, it's kind of, <laughs> I guess it's a little tiny bit embarrassing, but it's also really fun. So that's okay. Um, so where, oh, I was going to say like where I ended up getting my, um, all my, I didn't, oh, I didn't even, did I, oh, I didn't show. I'm so sorry. I just totally, uh, I skipped something. Sorry. Now you'll understand once I say. <laughs> okay. So I got, oh, I started, um, the Nora Corbett Halloween fairy from her, um, limited edition fairy holiday collection. So that's what it'll look like. And I tried to make, I tried to just get everything as accurate as possible because I, you know, I just really love the way that one looks. So I got a start right here. That's part of her hair. And um, it's on hand dyed by Rolanda. Um, Alma Linen 28 counts. And this is a, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. I mean, I. I absolutely love it. It's a, kind of a smaller piece of fabric than I normally get from her. So the little Halloween fairy was a perfect, a perfect piece. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? I love that so much. And this needle minder is from my friend Lacey. Uh, she is on Instagram and her handle is like the adjective. And yeah, so, um, I'm trying to keep something. Um, uh, so the classic color works, um, <laughs> floss that I got 
I will show you. I just, like I said, try to keep it totally accurate and I didn't want to, I, the variegated it kind of, it's variegated a little bit. It's like very gently variegated. Um, but I wanted it to be as accurate as possible to that. Um, so I, I just went with the classic color works. I didn't try to do a DMC equivalent or anything. And so it's my first time using classic color works. Um, oh, so pretty. I love it. Um, yeah. So, and I ended up getting a wrong color. So most of them I got from one, two, three stitch. And then they didn't, they had, um, they weren't, they didn't have like one of them. And, um, I, uh, just found that out last night when I started it. And so I was pretty, pretty disappointed, um, that I ordered the wrong, the wrong floss from this other place on Etsy. And it's not their fault. I was probably just tired, but I've never done that before. So yeah, um, it was, um, I accidentally ordered brand, uh, brandy pears and I think I was trying to order bramble bush. Yeah, bramble bush. So that was not, not that exciting, but the place that I ordered the wrong color from that I just ordered the right color from is floss and fabrics on Etsy. So yeah. Um, so it took me a minute to get there, but I got there. <laughs> uh, okay. And so my next, um, my next haul, oh, I'm going to get something. Okay. I'm back. Um, so my next bit of haul is the, uh, from the Northumberland sampler house on Etsy. And what a gorgeous presentation that Anita does. Um, Anita was the one that sent me Anne Bronte's uh, historical sampler um, for free, like, last year. It's amazing. So anyway, so I finally, she started making fabrics and dyeing these fabrics to go with the historical uh, samplers that she charts, that she restores and things. So, and then restitches, but, oh, it's so like floppy. I love, I love that. Um, that linen floppiness. Um, that's like what I'm using on my trick or treat piece, that same texture. And I just, oh, it's so wonderful to, to stitch on. So anyway, this piece is called parchment and it's a 28 count. And I believe I, at least it's a little bit of like a uh, haul stash enhancements and plans kind of mixed together here but I believe the one that I the sampler the historical sampler I will uh because you know this fabric is really just fabulous and I, I want to use it but I think I need to do a historical sampler because I've been wanting to do it for a while so this is Marjorie Petty 1870 and that is her sampler and I absolutely love this one it is so charming and what a cute thing. <laughs> so I think I'm going to do that next, um, for, you know, probably after Halloween, possibly start during Christmas time, winter. Um, so yeah, just love it. So yeah, with that fabric, so that's mine. And then, um, Anita also sends these, I don't know how much she did, maybe because if you're a first time customer, I, I'm not really sure, but she sent me this greeting card that's of an, uh, another sampler that she's, um, charted so and restored so yeah that's her Northumberland sampler house on Etsy and the next fabric haul that I got is from to die for fabrics.com and I, I have a really hard time finding like an accurate pumpkin Halloween kind of orange right and without the fabric being like too like scrunched together. Like I don't really like a lot of um, ridges on my fabric, I guess, so to speak. So um, yeah, I, and so I got this and this is really pretty great um, for the color and it's an 18 by 27, so fat quarter and it's Lugana. Um, yeah, did I say 28 count already? <laughs> um, so yeah, that's it's just gorgeous. So I, they 
set it out fairly, fairly quickly. So yeah, and I honestly don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but I wanted for sure to have this on hand for, um, you know, next Halloween, probably when I start more Halloween stuff. So, um, let's see. Sorry, I'm taking a second. Okay. So, and then on pole stitches, um, I ended up just being there at the right time on, um, their, um, Facebook, on their Facebook group when they were, they said that they had gotten excess of fabrics from Zweigart and that they, you know, were going to basically reward their customers by giving like a killer deal on a, just a bundle, a grab bag of fabrics. So I was just like, yes, <laughs> please, I will take some of those. And I believe these are just uh, probably Lugana uh, 28 count. I, that's normally what I kind of default to. Um, especially when it's going to be random colors, like they, it was just like, whatever you get, you get kind of thing. And look at that. I'm like, do they know, like, I think Joe Critchley, I think that's her name. Like, does she know my taste? Because she sent me exactly the kind of fabric that I would, <laughs> that I would use. So just like, wow, thank you, Joe. Um, yeah, just amazing. Like that. So join their Facebook group if you really like Pulse Stitches fabric. And then this one. Oh my goodness. Yes, please. Like, can you imagine some kind of a Mira on that? Or a, you know, um, even a Joan Elliott some, of some kind? Kind of some you know, forest or water themed thing, uh, mermaid fairy, whatever. Just gorgeous. Love it. And then this last one is just, I mean, these are perfect. I would just, I mean, I am going to use every single one of these <laughs> eventually. So, wow. Just, it's like cotton candy and like maybe Sleeping Beauty like that, you know, like just, please. <laughs> okay. Um, so that was a shock that they were all perfect when I got that grab bag. Um, yeah. So then, so I was watching Megan Stitching Moon, watching her chart parade and she has so many hades. Wow. <laughs> um, that's a lot of, that's a lot of ambition. That's a lot of hates. Um, and I did see ones that I loved, but um, that's a lot of commitment uh, for me. And it's kind of, I need to know the site better. So I go in when there's a sale, but um, there's some, there's like a Josephine Wall one that I really love, the, one of the bubble ones. I already have a Josephine Wall, um, but I don't have the kit for it. And I don't know if I've ever showed it because, you know, I didn't know if I was going to do it. So Okay, sorry. Um, I just a <laughs> little. Okay, so the chart that I got though from watching her um, was this one, and it's a long dog sampler, Maggie Kitchy Whips. <laughs> um, uh, she addressed this issue that I think maybe a lot of us have by saying long dong samplers <laughs> because it's like it's just like a tongue twister and so I'm like I'm gonna say it right I'm really gonna try but I'm gonna address the elephant in the room here okay so Ragnarok is this piece that I saw on Megan Stitching Moon's chart parade um episode she might have done two um uh, chart parades I I just was stitching a lot one night and was like I watched her caught up with most of her stuff I think I caught up with all of it sorry I'm trying to see yeah just longdogsampler.com um I'm sure I got it from uh Nikki's Glen Needlework on Etsy uh yeah so there it is it's really cool and once obviously once you start stitching it 
it's going to be way cooler because this flat black does not do this any justice. Um, I'm almost thinking I'm going to do a variegated uh, floss on this, but um, I'm open to suggestions. I would love to hear when those of you that, um, you know, stitch long dog samplers, please let me know what you prefer for a, a little daisies, um, a long dog sampler. Um, I'm thinking a red with orange or dark blues to light blues. If, let me know because Ragnarok, you know, is a definitely a themed, you know, for like destruction in the end. So, um, and then, um, the other haul I got, I think this was from watching the Crafty Stitchers, um, Heather and Steve, um, I was trying to make sure I got Crafty Stitchers right, but, um, I think they had this, and if it wasn't you guys, I am sorry to whoever I forgot had this. And I know it was someone that I really was enjoying watching. Um, so Midnight Watch by Blackbird Designs. I love Blackbird Designs, by the way. I do have one that I've already shown on a previous floss tube. Um, and I've always intended to get some more. So this was perfect because it has a cat on a moon. And I love when there's moons in these types of kind of primitive style samplers. So love it. Probably next Halloween I will do this. And probably finish it. So, um, oh, and then the other thing I got from Rolanda. Oh, did I already show? I showed this last time, I think. There it is. It's still in my pile. Shows how organized I am. Um, but I, oh, I was, what I wanted to show you all, this is why I'm digging through this pile, was um, that I found, I had ordered, I think I might have shown this, yeah, on my last one. Did I? Did I say I was going to use this last time? Oh my gosh, if I did, I'm sorry. So I found out that I would, I think this would be perfect for the Glendon Place um, Phantom Plantation, um, you know, fabric. I think it would be perfect. I love it. I think it goes really, really well. So, um, yeah, so to see the yellows and the blues, just like the, the fabric on the example picture shows and um you know i just love rolanda and um you know in her work so i just very much love to stitch on on her fabric so if i can incorporate her fabric into what i'm doing then i'm going to so um let's see so yeah oh and speaking of this one uh steve from crafty stitchers he um uh, he started his. So uh, that was really exciting. Um, so kind of shout outs already. I think he, I think he started right here. I, I'm pretty sure. Um, so uh, Steve and Heather um, shouted me out from that channel from Crafty Stitchers on Flosstube. And um, thank you very much for that. Um, they, uh, Steve has the most, you know, he has a great taste. Like I watched their floss tube and um, you know, I've been watching their floss tubes since, um, since I found out who they were and, um, you know, knowing he had such a fabulous array of, um, you know, fabrics and, um, you know, patterns on his Instagram, um, his whips and everything and finishes, um, you know, I guess I just never like thought they had a channel or he had a channel. Like, so when I found that out, I was like, oh my gosh, and had to watch. So that was awesome. Um. And uh, so, so really excited. So I, I'm like, I know that I'm going to get really into this once I start it and probably, you know, won't be able to like put it down. It'll become probably more of a focus. So I'm tempted to start it way sooner um, than, than probably the start of next year, but we'll see what happens. So I, I really am so curious about what it's like to stitch a blend in place. So um, cause I've seen so many people enjoying their blend in place pieces. Um, yeah, so let's see. 
Um, yeah, now I'm trying to remember if I showed you something. Hold on. Okay, so I don't think I showed you that Rolanda floss. So, I don't know what's, you know, it's just, it seems like some of it's like old mixed with the new haul, but some of it is because I had the pattern and didn't have the fabric, or I had the fabric and didn't have the pattern. So, um, I kind of did put it together for plans to show you. So, I want to do this pattern called Silent Phantoms of the Night. I don't think I showed you this. I'm pretty sure I didn't. So, if I did, I'm sorry. So this Silent Phantoms of the Night, I love this piece and for sure start it next year. Um, so Silent Phantoms of the Night in their robes of ghostly white. They are always to be seen on the night of Halloween. So there it is. It's so cool. And uh, it's pretty big. Um, I probably have to open it up to show you, but maybe I just will because yeah, I'm watching other people doing their, um, like the Halloween Quaker and different Halloween samplers. It's kind of just gotten me more excited about doing one myself. So it is um, 329 wide by 313 um, high. So um, yeah, so that's about, let's see, on a... 20 by 19 almost yeah so it's like 20 and a half by 19 and a half inches on a 32 count and I believe I did get this uh this fabric to go with it this picture this plus fabric uh cauldron is it cauldron yes uh no it's haunted Belfast linen 32 count so this is the one I got to go with the with the um, Silent Phantoms of the Night piece. Um, and the shop is tw TwinPeakPrimitives.com And I got that from Hollis Hands Create on Etsy.com So I think this fabric will be perfect with that. However, you know, some of the black it might kind of disappear on it. I mean, I don't I don't really know if I would want to do anything but black. So maybe that's okay with all those, the yellows and the orange, how they pop off the, the blue and maybe the black is less visible or less, you know, maybe that's okay. You know, what do you guys think? I think it will look awesome. So haunted, um, I picture this class. Okay, and then my next haul, and I think kind of toward the end here, <laughs> is More Hand-Dyed by Rolanda. Rolanda, Rolanda. I've heard people say it both, both ways, even, yeah, so. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, it's so gorgeous. So I'm thinking... Possibly a Joan Elliott fairy with that one because I got a couple of those. I'm going to show you. Okay. And then this is something different. Oh, oh and this was, I didn't even see. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a mess. So that last one is Lugana Opal uh, 28 count. Okay. There we go. So this one is kind of a different one by Rolanda. And um, Opal Lugana 28 count. And she had another one that was just like this, kind of the, you know, sideways, splashy stripes. Um, and once that was sold, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to get it. Because I didn't want to lose out and just to try some her different, her experiment on something different. So, because I don't know if I'll ever see that again. Because I haven't seen those, the one, those two, if you've, you know, watched other episodes and if you've seen some of my whips and finishes like the the witch that um I think it's sold by stitch now but was Lola Lotta um on Etsy um you know the witch that I had last time my last episode I did have it here um but that fabric like I've never seen Rolanda like do it again 
So, and then the one that I'm, the fabric also that I'm using for um, Trick or Treat, she's never done that again, that I can tell. I, I don't know. Maybe she has and I just was avoiding her shop so I wouldn't buy everything. <laughs> Lucky Chance Stitcher said <laughs> she does. She avoids it. So, because like, I, it's, there's so many gorgeous things. I'm like, I'm never going to see that again. So, um, okay. And then off of Joan Elliott's uh, Facebook group. I got some uh, of her pattern. I'm so excited. Um, so this is Moon Dance. And look at that. I love that green uh, coming off of the um, the dark kind of sky fabric. Ugh, just so gorgeous. I love it. And I don't stitch a lot of moons, although I do love the moon. And I, I have plans to do more stitching of moons. So, yeah, I just, I love, I love this piece. And the Butterfly Fairy. So pretty, definitely different mood than I feel like stitching right now. But it's beautiful. Oh, and then this is covering. Okay. And the Fairy of the Clouds. I really love the fluffy clouds, swirly fluffy clouds, and I love the folds of her dress and the different layers, and I love her kind of carefree pose and her wings, and just, oh, so pretty. You can just see stitching that is all whimsical, just every moment whimsical. And a sweet little note from Joan Elliott in there made my absolutely made my day so um yeah i think that's it so um oh my, the shout outs that i wanted to do were, were um so i already did say crafty stitchers go check them out um on floss tube and oh specifically i watched um an episode that they just did the recent episode where they have Maxine uh, Nightmare Before Stitchmas. She was guest starring and she's so funny. Like I I love like she and Heather and Steve together were like really fun and you know a lot of like a lot of giggling and laughing and stuff but you know um just different stuff like it was it was really good and um I like their conversation about you know kind of like losing your stitchy bug and you know, you're getting it back eventually and that kind of stuff. So, um, that was, that was really great. Um, and great, you know, obviously, um, Maxine and Steve have like great whips. Maxine always has great whips. She's doing a, like a, an autumn stocking. Can't remember the name of it right now, but check out that episode. Um, you'll, you'll enjoy. And then, um, Amanda, Lucky Chance Stitcher, she gave me a shout out on Instagram and then like, 20 new people came over and subscribed and that was so so appreciated thank you amanda um and uh she she has if you haven't watched her i'm sure you i'm sure you have but if you haven't she has um she has a lot of rolando fabric as well and she is a very prolific stitcher um and loves to do fancy ladies and uh they're you know beautifully done She's very professional where she has, you know, she, she makes sure she has her whips on a board. And so, and, they're, and she talks about her process a lot um, to where I would feel like she's, she's like drawing new stitchers in and helping new stitchers maybe not feel so intimidated by, um, you know, things like fancy ladies. And uh, I think that's really, that is so valuable. Like we need that. We do need new stitchers and people to find out about the joy of cross-stitching, um, you know, that's, that is needed and our, our, um, designers need more support and more, um, you know, customers because then it keeps them going and keeps them designing and, you know, if the, especially if it's their main livelihood. Um, so, and then she has a, she finished recently, well, in the last few months, um, finished the Disney dream Cinderella, um, which is fabulous where she like, um, re, she she did like a bigger, well, 
so like a smaller stitch count so like a bigger uh, version of that than the, what was on the 18 count from the kit and got her own flosses and everything because of all the issues that people have had with the Disney Dreams kits. So it looks wonderful. Um, so I, I do love her taste and she's, you know, she's a nice person. She's like pleasant to watch and pleasant to listen to. Um, and you know, you're going to get good information from her. So, um, and then of course, um, I haven't given her a shout out for a while, but um, you know, like I'm always, I'm always thinking of her and like, we'll mention her, but Mary Daydream Stitcher, like she's, you know, she's my good friend and uh, which I'm so grateful for. So blessed for that. Um, and I do hope to meet you one day, Mary. Um, and hopefully it'll be in a retreat. Who knows? Um, but she's making such great progress on the Glennon Place Sleepy Hollow piece. The one I've talked about before that I you know, vicariously <laughs> live through people doing it. Um, so, and then she's also started the Halloween Quaker, which is, and she's going pretty fast on that. So that's really cool. And then, um, and thank you for your shout outs, Mary. And, uh, yeah, so, and I, I love, you know, what she calls rants. I, I love them. So, um, don't worry about those. Send, send them my way. <laughs> um, let's see. And then Mary, Magnolia Stitcher. She's in the under 1000 subs club. Um, she gave me a shout out the other day that was so sweet. So, um, thank you for that, um, uh, Mary. And she is into soda stitch and she loves hand dyed by Rolanda. And, um, she gets, um, I think she gets kind of like sometimes we'll look for kind of the older, uh, patterns and, and, um, possibly, yeah, just like patterns and booklets. Um, she got this like a like a total find, a, a Hummel booklet. And when I used to look for Hummel designs, um, they used to be really expensive. So I kind of got discouraged and stopped looking because I won't spend over a certain amount on just a, like a pattern because it's like older, but Hummel obviously is, is quality and, and nice. But, um, anyways, and then I wanted to tell Steph, Total Stitch Show, that I'm sorry about the faux pas of saying that you were a crocheter. And that, you know, I want to correct the record here. You knit. She's a knitter, right? Is that the right? Okay. Unless you guys call yourself something more special than a knitter. <laughs> so, sorry. And then, um, yeah, this has gone on quite a long time. But um, one of, I, I wanted to tell you, like, about um, a, a movie. Um, if you guys haven't seen it, it's on Prime. It is so good and if you're a cat lover then you'll probably love it even more but it is the electrical life of louis wayne and it's starring benedict cumberbatch and um it is i mean i like originally i really wasn't like a big benedict cumberbatch fan when he was like playing sherlock holmes um because i have my own idea of sherlock holmes like Basil Rathbone kind of, you know, classic idea. Um, and uh, anyway, so, but he's really like picked some roles and that, you know, really kind of wormed me up to him. So, um, but this, this role was beautiful, like so well done. The movie was well done. It's just a whole experience all on its own. And yeah, I believe it's, it's an Amazon prime movie. Um, so maybe some people might be more hesitant to watch something that's just by, you know, like Amazon Prime, but it is wonderful. Um, so yeah, check that out. And, uh, yeah. Um, uh, and also I've been enjoying She-Hulk. I don't know if anybody would enjoy that it's on Disney Plus, but you know, it has, it kind of has like some criticisms in it toward, of like the Marvel fandom. And, you know, I feel like some of the stuff that they're saying is, you know, like the Marvel fandom maybe complains about with some things is valid, but some of it just seems like kind of whiny and kind of silly. But, you know, I mean, it depends, like, because I'm, I'm, I can see both sides most of the time. So I am not too strong in either way, like about some of the issues. But anyway, so I guess She-Hulk is like kind of considered that it's like picking Marvel apart too, kind of the stuff that they they're doing with their movies and stuff but I mean I think it's fine it's like you know some of it's valid so <laughs> anyway but 
So yeah, she looks really good and uh, the electrical life of Blue Rain. And I look forward to talking to you all again soon. And thank you so much for all your sweet, wonderful comments and your encouraging comments and your hilarious comments. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I could show you my really fast what I have here um, behind me, but this is my um, Wee Little Stitches Frankenstein and His Bride. I love this piece. And I just simply put it in a frame at the photo last year. And I'll give this one to you now. I'm starting to get so many episodes that I can't expect you guys to all have seen some of the stuff behind me that I've um, FFO'd. So I stitched this from, I believe it was the Cross Stitcher magazine from many years ago. And I believe this might have been my first autumn piece ever. And there's the back. And my husband did those dowels. Oh. And I did this with piping, you know, and did the whole like interface and the, just a real thin layer of batting on the back of this. So there's the dowels. They're supposed to look like acorns. They look like acorns. They're so, so pretty. I love them. So there. And then I just, you know, hung some um, crystals on there and just some, you know, leaves from from Joanne's probably on the side and just did a blue ribbon because nothing else matches the butterflies in this. <laughs> so anyways, it says autumn, <clears throat> sorry, autumn, faded glory of beauty past, golden promise of splendor yet to come. Alrighty, and with that, on that note, I will talk to you all later. Happy stitching!